Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Presidency clarifies visit of seven governors to London as governor of Imo State, Rocha Sokoracha, refutes claim of President Buhari being on life support. Senate moves to strip EFCC of control of a Nigerian financial intelligence unit, begins debate on review of 1999 constitution. At least one dead and many feared trapped as four-story building collapses in Lagos Island. Operations by security agencies ongoing at the scene of the incident. And hope rises for return of peace to war-torn Libya as rival groups agree to ceasefire. A quick reminder to you that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. And log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Having the Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature, so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share these pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Let's now take a look at some of those pictures that were sent in to us. And we can begin from Ueli North in Delta State, showing a flooded road. Our eyewitness reporter says this is a major road for motorists and wants the state government to come to their aid. Still on floods, here's a picture from the railway police barracks in Yaba, Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the Lagos State government to fix the drainage as soon as possible. The next one shows a dilapidated road in Benue State and our eyewitness reporter is asking the government to rehabilitate the road. Let's end with this one which shows an illegal dump site from Ikom in Cross River State. According to our eyewitness reporter, this has been this way for three months now and he's worried about the potential hazard it could cause to residents and the environment. Thanks a lot for all your pictures and we ask you to please keep them coming. A group of protesters bearing the hashtag not too young to run today stormed the main entrance of the National Assembly seeking to get the attention of the lawmakers. They're asking for constitutional backing that would allow young Nigerians vie for elected positions. But their peaceful protest was interrupted by security operatives who accused them of obstructing vehicular movement in and out of the National Assembly. Dozens of young people converge on the Unity Fountain in Abuja to march in support of a bill that seeks to reduce the age requirement for people seeking elective positions. There is another tomorrow. Yes. That tomorrow is when. Just before the march, we asked some of the conveners why they were involved in the gathering when the bill had already passed its first and second reading in the House of Representatives. We need young blood, we need young people with a lot of energy, with a lot of idealism in our political airspace. This bill basically seeks to promote um, inclusion and young people should participate in the political process as a way of giving them the opportunity to contribute to national development. The gathering also includes so non-youth supporters going by the United Nations definition which stipulates that youth are those between the ages of 15 to 24. Basically why I'm here is to support the cause of the these young people of our country who have embarked on this process to push for a law that will reduce the elective age for young people in Nigeria and because the young people are in the majority. The march then begins in earnest and the destination is a National Assembly gate where they hope to be addressed by the federal lawmakers. Now we want the big speaker and the federal president to come and speak to us now. Currently, the constitution provides that to run for office in the Senate, one must attain the age of 35 for House of Representatives, 30, and for the office of the president, 45. The new bill, however, is seeking a downward review of those ages to 25 years for the House of Representatives and 35 for the president. The representative of the Senate assures the group that the lawmakers are aware of the proposals as they embark on the amendment of the 1999 Constitution. We are taking a step to make sure that 
residency of this country have been reduced from the, from 40 to 35. And that the governorship has been reduced to the age of 30. Should the majority vote in favor of this new bill in the ongoing constitution amendment process, Nigeria could possibly witness a young elected president in the near future. There you have the visuals there. At least five persons are reported to have been rescued from the rubble of a four-story building that collapsed in Lagos Island earlier today. More residents are feared to be trapped in the building located on Tokumbo Street. Search and rescue operations by officials of the Lagos State Management Agency and other rescue bodies are said to be ongoing to evacuate the victims from the scene. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has retained the monetary policy rate at 14% per annum. At the end of a two-day meeting held at the Apex Bank's headquarters, the CBN Governor, Godwin Mefele, explained that six members of the committee agreed to maintain the current monetary policy stance. Now to take a look at the MPC decision to maintain status quo, Three months after the Monetary Policy Committee retained the basic interest rate at 14% in April, it has now left the same unchanged in an effort to enhance borrowing and to provide liquidity in the financial system. Just before this decision, however, members of the MPC caution against increasing government borrowing. The MPC expressed concern over the increasing fiscal deficit estimated at 2.51 trillion naira in the first half of 2017 and the crowding out effect of high government borrowing. Other points raised by members of the MPC illustrate that available forecasts of key macroeconomic indicators point to a fragile economic recovery in the second quarter of the year. However, they caution that this recovery could relapse into a more protracted recession if strong monetary and fiscal policies are not put in place to sustain it. Notwithstanding the improved outlook for growth, Committee assess the implications of the uncertainties arising from the continued normalization of monetary policy by the United States Fed and the implications of a strong dollar, the weak recovery of commodity prices, and the uncertainty of the U.S. fiscal policy. According to members of the Monetary Policy Committee, one key achievement for the economy is the decline in headline inflation for the fifth consecutive month in June. However, there is a rise in food prices which is largely attributed to the activities of terrorist groups and communal clashes in communities where farming thrives. The committee was particularly concerned about the unabating pressure from food inflation but remains hopeful that the situation will, damp, will, will dampen in the third quarter as harvest begins to manifest. While concluding the quarterly review of the economy, the MPC highlights that foreign exchange inflows through the Central Bank of Nigeria are said to have increased by 35.41% in June 2017 compared with the previous month. Well, to take a look at the MPC decision to maintain status quo, I'm now being joined in the news at 10 by the Managing Director, CEO of Financial Derivatives, Mr. Bismarck Rewani. Thank you so much for joining us on Thank the news at John. 10. And what a day to have you in the chair. I mean, there's so much to cover, but let's just start with this 14-month status quo. Um, what was your initial reaction before? No surprise. Uh, we all expected it. There's been no change since July 2016. And... Um, Quite frankly, the governor made a speech at the University of Nigeria where he made it clear that um, the circumstances may not be ripe for a change in the direction expected. Also, it talked, this was an anti-inflation move. In other words, the committee felt that after weighing all circumstances, that the risks of high inflation, which they say is responsible 
the, weak, the risk of a weaker Naira, which was responsible for high inflation, was much higher than the benefits of actually going accommodative. But the question now is that what kind of inflation? There are two types of inflation. There's inflation where you demand too much or inflation where you produce too little. If you look at the profile of Nigerian, the Nigerian inflation that you see today, it is more because production is low, because there's, there are supply shocks, because there are constraints to production, not as a result of high demand. Therefore, if you are using a low interest rate environment actually increases productivity and addresses the problem of a recession. While high interest rates assume that because you are demanding too much, you will switch from consumption to savings, right? And that is the fundamental difference here. But the, the question, for the first time in many meetings, we had um, two members, 25% of the members, actually voting against. And I was going to ask government. you about that. Why did, they, why did they vote that way? Well, if you go to the slide there, which shows um, why do nothing. You see, the, the protagonist for this move said, one, excess liquidity is dangerous, right? It increases liquidity, and the liquidity will find its way to the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market will lead to a weaker Naira. Weaker Naira will, be, will translate itself to higher inflation, and higher inflation, according to the model, which says that at 10 to 12 percent, inflation is growth retarding. That's the argument. They also say that the high interest rates, this artificial high interest rates, if I may use that word, mm. attracts hot money. You just, the report said 35 percent increase in foreign inflows in the month of June. But that's hot money. That's money coming after short-term paper, you know, treasury bills and things. That is not the investment that you need to drive productivity and all this foreign direct investment, which is, at this point, has not started coming in, in in the kind of sums that we require. But those who are against it will say, look, bring down interest rates, show an accommodative stance, move directionally in that, in, in that particular path. Say, government debt service. Nigeria is spending 66 to 70 percent of its independent revenue servicing debt. That means that for every naira we earn, about 70 kobo is used to pay interest because the interest rates are too high. Secondly, lower interest rate is a stimulus. It's an injection into the system. It stimulates economic activity, which creates more employment. Re uh, unemployment and unemployment figures are going to come out tomorrow. The speculation out there is that it will increase. But did you, are, did you agree with them? With those I, agree? I agree that it yeah. might go higher because it, right now it's about 30%. Right? Then also there's the political pressure. As you go into an electoral cycle, you need lower interest rates to create economic activity so that people will have their jobs. But look at what has happened to other countries. Two countries, South Africa and Ghana, have actually brought down interest rates, while three, Kenya, Angola, and Nigeria, maintain the status quo. But if you look at the seven indicators in that chart, seven indicators, five of them are positive. External reserves are, have increased, exchange rate has appreciated, oil production has increased, inflation is down, and treasury rates have actually marginally came down. The two things that are negative is that oil price has dropped and power supply has reduced. So just finally, in terms of the impact of this status quo on the average Nigerian, uh, the middle class? Yeah, I'm going to come back. Yeah. Now, just the, the enough, big thing, um, for the worker, the guy who is working out there, the big thing is that you're still going to buy gala at 15 naira tomorrow, whether, whatever happens. You're still going to buy beans at 32,000 naira a bag, and you're going to buy you know, beans at 24,000 and gari at 32,000 naira. There's no question the hardship will continue until the near future. For the work, middle class, your school fees probably remain the same in the next, until next term when it will be adjusted. Your domestic airfares between Anabuja and Port Harcourt and others will remain flat. And your house rent is more likely to be heading towards an increase you know, at the end of the year. Now, for the affluent and the elite, the summer tickets, because the exchange rate has appreciated, summer tickets are going to be cheaper. International school fees in Naira terms will be lower, and more than anything else, the foreign medical trips will be. So what next? The MPC will meet in September, but before then, actions will be taken. Instruments to make this, to make, to make changes possible even between meetings. Because Central Bank, if you see the narrative, was very clear. 
that they want to move in favor of boosting economic activity and lowering inflation. Thank you so very much, MD CEO of Financial Derivatives, Mr. Bismarck Rwani, for sharing your thoughts and crunching those numbers for us on the Thank news of 10 much. tonight. Thank you. And when the news at 10 returns, Securities and Exchange Commission issues March 2018 as deadline for all market institutions to show proof of compliance with the new tax amnesty program. Do join us again.